Welcome back, r and &R, episode 18. We're here with the man, Chad Rhodes. We're up at a little new location back in Florence, Kentucky. Chad, this is your, uh, not your first time in the broadcast booth, but definitely a new location for r and &R Talk. How do you feel about it? Not the first time. I like the view. Um, it's nice. Got down to BP a little early, so go ahead and knock one of these out, catch up on the past few games, uh, see what you got. Yeah, why not? And, uh, and you said you had some experience on the bourbon trail being actually up at the broadcast booth. How'd those go? Oh, they went great. I, mean, I got them on YouTube. They're on the YouTube. They're on the YouTube? I'm going to clip up, some, clip up some of those. It was nice. I, mean, I was just kind of laying it out. Was, we had both teams playing against each other. Um, so I knew the guys on the bump, and I knew the guys at the plate. So just kind of talking about some ABs and how they were going to play out. Uh, so it was, it was fun. It was fun on both sides. It makes it a little a little bit different, a little bit easier, too, because um, you, you can expect. Yeah. So you can see some challenge right here. You can see some situational stuff. You can kind of call it out a little bit before because you know both guys. You know what they're trying to do. Um, so, no, it was fun. I, I actually liked being up here. You know how I like talking. So, Yeah, and you just, got a, just had a good interview down on the field, doing a little uh, segment on Craig Massey. We had uh, Local 12 out here, which was uh, good to get you. You sounded good on that, looked good on that, which was great. I didn't know. I didn't know you had been married 12 years. I didn't know you had been yeah, married longer than Massey. I think it's 12 years. Um, it was October 1st, 2011, so it was like one zero. Zero one one one, you know, something weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So this is twenty four, so it'll be thirteen. So yeah, twelve. Twelve. It's crazy. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Well, congratulations on that. And uh, you know, we're here. We're taking on Schaumburg, continuing that four game series. I don't know if we had done one about Schaumburg. I think we had that first morning game in Schaumburg. Ah, we didn't did. want to talk about those. Yeah, yeah it was a couple. Yeah. Didn't. Uh, didn't I didn't do anything good to say. <laughs> Uh, no, we got we had a couple we had a lead in a couple of those at their place, especially that that we went that that week on the dirt. Um, we did we had a lead in a couple of those. Uh, I just squandered those late, um, but you know it's just I like playing Schaumburg. I always like when Jamie comes in because you know what you got to play, like you know what you got to do, you know what they're gonna do. It's kind of one of those situations. Can you can you stop them from executing and can you execute better and can you play clean? Um, can you not let the the walks? <laughs> can you not walk the guys to steal bags, please? Uh, <laughs> force the action there. Uh, but, no, you got to make the plays. You know what they're trying to do on the bases. Can you limit those? Can you not give up those extra bags? And um, can you throw strikes, stay ahead, and force force your will on them rather than them them taking control of those at-bats by going deeper? Um, and we, you know, we had Cook for the third time. Had a little bit of plan, but I, I liked the – wanted to bring out the young players against him that haven't seen him, that didn't really have a plan. They kind of kind of caught – kind of hot. And uh, similar arms they've – Faced, I would say, in college, but a little bit more professional, obviously, as far as his plan and how to go about him. I thought Blaze um, was the epitome of that. I thought first at bat, didn't know anything about him. We told him, you know, you see something early up, go, on, go ahead and attack it. And he did. I thought he had a good at bat and hit that ball off center field wall. And then the second at bat, I thought he got kind of picked apart a little bit. And that was uh, that was a little bit of adjustment. We talked to him. I was like, you're facing a pitcher now. So he's trying to do something to you. Um, he's going to get ahead of you. Then, But he's going to kind of – he's gonna. I like the way he uses his curveball. I like the way he uses his slider off of He's hard to hit. Um, and he got Blaze on that second at bat, but I think that locked him in and made him adapt, and I could see a little bit of that in him. He's a good player, man. He, he's been a really a, a spark for us here, here lately. Yeah, I really think those three players you brought in, you know, Harustic and then the two pitchers, Reed Smith, Randy Abshire, and then you bring in Blaze O'Saban as well. I think those four really have kind of changed the dynamic of the team, brought a lot of energy to the team, mm -hmm. and that's really kind of been the turnaround here. Uh, you know, now we sit at 16 or 17 to 23, after last afternoon's win, it was yeah. an 11 a.m. start here on Splash Day, Thomas More Stadium. I got to say, probably the most exciting game of the season, one of the best wins of the season. You take down Schaumburg 8-7, to seven, courtesy of a walk-off grand slam from T.J. Reeves. What was that like uh, down the third baseline coaching? I mean, it was nice. You could feel it. It was palpable going in there, um, especially off the night before. We knew Joyce was warming up coming in again. Uh, guys knew we were capable of doing that again to him. We knew they were thin. They're going to let him ride that. So it's kind of worked some good abs early, and you know we're not doing anything crazy on the bases, not overextending ourselves. We got to we got to score more than one. The first couple guys they don't mean anything. We just got to get something rolling. And we had some good at bats. Everybody had to contribute for that, and it was a great it was a great team win. Obviously, the walk off grand slam, Fuentes drew a humongous walk with a great at bat right before that. Um, gave him an award after that game up there in the clubhouse. That was big time. Um, Chavez legging out that. That little chopper. I mean, everything, everything counted. Everything meant something. Um, so it was nice. And we talked about it afterwards. You know, the goal where we're at right now. We know where we're at. We talked about it on that that trip before. You heard. You know, this this was the hole, man. If you ain't about digging digging your way out and getting back out of here, then you need to get off this bus. 
Um, but here we are. You know, we're in a good spot. We had that message last night. I think that was a spark to say all-star break. We're getting above 500. Like, that is the goal. That's the team goal. That's what we're planning on doing. Um, and then we'll make our push after that, and we'll let our work and our daily stuff kind of take over. And, and, and I think that our routine that we do as a team, I think the energy is only going to compound, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow as the season goes on. And I think when we're 60, 70, 80 games deep, um, that's going to pay off over the other clubs that, that aren't as disciplined. Yeah, and you got about two and a half weeks to All Star break, uh, featuring a lot of teams, or at least six games against the East Side. Mm -hmm. Team you have talked about. Uh, you know, I like how we match up against the Eastern teams. Uh, you'll be facing New York and New Jersey as well there. Um, I, I still want to talk about that ninth inning because you guys had a very good ninth inning the day before. Ed Johnson actually tagged Joyce for a three run shot. Mm -hmm. uh, we just came up one run short there. You finally got it. That's the first win against Schaumburg this season. Does that bring momentum? Obviously, into this game, you want it to carry throughout. But I just, you know, you guys can beat this team. It's yeah. kind of seemed just a little bit annoying to me. Uh, you know, two run games, one run games against Schaumburg. You couldn't put that nail in. Now we got the nail in. What does that do? No, I think it's kind of like what we built the uh, atmosphere going into it. Obviously, end of that long road trip, going to their place for that one game early. Um, you know, a little thin on bullets there. So it was. We want to take one at their place on the on the dirt because we're gonna have to go back there and play off. So we're gonna make it. Um, you know, I thought things held together a little bit early. Uh, Louvier was you know short on bullets, and we had to extend Ross a little bit. And um, you know, it turned out the way it turned out. And I thought the first game here, Villalobos. You know, I thought he I thought he pitched well. Um, had to ride him a little bit that last inning. It wasn't. It was kind of. He was 73 pitches. And he's been way deep in water. It's a different lineup. He's about to go through for a third time. I didn't necessarily like it, or, you know, and it wasn't because I didn't think he's capable of doing it, but it's more of the innings they've seen and what their offense is capable of doing against him, um, especially if his stuff's ticked down a little bit later going into that, that extra inning that I wanted him to go. But we're thin, like I said, man, we're thin on arms, and I didn't like the options I had because I'm not, I didn't want to bring Cam Fair into a dirty inning just coming off TJ, you know, yeah. his third outing of the year. I didn't want to do that. had to do it. Um, but I didn't feel like I had the length to cover if I brought him in and started that inning rather than be a Lobo. So I did roll the dice a little bit, um, sent him out there, and it, it kind of came back to bite us a little. Um, Prater got that knock up the middle, bases with the guys in second and third, infield in. That one, that one kind of hurt. Um, yeah. and the damage is done right there. But I thought we did fight back in that one too. Um, it, it was nice to see. But, yeah, you, you know, we're going in there. We haven't won a game against them yet, and it's not necessarily we feel like this team's – they just got our number. It's just like I said, it's a day-to-day process of playing the game clean, playing the game sharp, and they're going to do that. And, you know, like it's the way their club's built. I'm trying to build mine the same way. You know, they got a young core of guys they build around. They play together for a while, know how each other play, and they know what to expect out of each other. And I think at this point when we brought in those new guys um, and the guys that have been here, the core that we brought in at the beginning of the year understands that. So I think these pieces kind of fitting – right into what we want to do has uh, finally come to fruition a little bit. And I think the games we competed against Schaumburg is finally catching up, and, and we can see it. Obviously, uh, I, you know, we, ha we had one inning yesterday. If we avoid that one, I think the game game's in hand. Um, but, no, we like where we're at, and I think that does ne doesn't necessarily help the chances today because I think it's a new day, and we start all over again, and we're going to have to do it from the first inning again. But getting that monkey off our back of getting that dub against them in the fashion that we did. Um, I think the guys are the guys are excited. There's a lot of energy out there, and I expect to see that from uh, pitch one. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit. You brought it up there. Um, you brought up in the Yonaker Lobo start. Um, y you were kind of teetering there third time around. Uh, the past few instances, I've seen you kind of on the edge of the steps. You're, you're waiting to pull it. It was with Yonaker Lobos, Darian Williams, and Joe Kemwich yesterday. But you're also speaking with Craigie. You know, is it – do you pull him now? Do you try and get that extra out? What's that conversation sound like with Carl Craig, the pitching coordinator, as well as like what are you looking for in those situations? A lot of them were bases loaded, either infield in or middle infield push back. Are you just yeah. trying to get the double play? What, what was that conversation? Uh, you know, where we're at right now, say on this long stretch, it's more of uh, who's capable, and, and it's not necessarily trying to look for tomorrow, but it's like what do we got tomorrow? The, de the Williams inning, you know, he – well, asking, asking two innings out of him. Yeah. It's a little different um, with him as far as the way he pitches, but if we could have got two out of him, we saved Ben, and that gives us a couple innings for yesterday, which we needed. Because um, if I would have used Ben, then I wouldn't have been able to ride him two yesterday. So I knew I had a, I needed a little bit of length, uh, but at that point, we didn't want it to get out of hand. It was uh, it was 5-3 before that. And did, Darian went out and ended up 8-3 before yeah. we – yeah. So that inning, it started getting – you know, I thought – 
I'm never going to complain about the zone. I, I don't. I don't complain about the zone. I don't think it helps. But what I'll say about that one is I think that they talked him into a little bit. I, th I thought uh, Alec did a little a bit of a good job and won the bat. Well, he got a pitch. It was the first pitch of the, the bat. It was called a strike. It was that high strike that he's been calling all day. And then he grinded out that at bat, uh, was talking about it in between, and then it got balled on a full count. And I think from that point on, when it got balled for the rest of that inning, it was a ball, but it's been a strike. And I thought Darian was around the zone. It wasn't like he was spraying out of control, ended up with five walks. I mean, that's the most you've ever seen him. He doubled his total uh, on the year, and he's been lights out. So I mean, he wasn't spraying the ball, but he wasn't getting that call. And I didn't want to – I had Ben Tossin just in case it get out, didn't get out of control, but it happened so quick I didn't want to rush Ben. Didn't want to bring him in, and him kept going. We're one pitch away from getting out of that thing, and I didn't want to wear out D-Will, but I also, like I said, didn't want to burn a bullet that I needed two innings yeah. out of yesterday. But it's just one of those spots where me and Carl are always open, the communication is always open, and we're talking back and forth of our options. Um, but I, like I said, man, there's a little bit of care in the guys. I, I'm never going to never gonna wear a guy out, never going to rush a guy in a situation that I don't think he's ready for, that I don't think that he's capable of doing. Um, and it, and it worked out for being able to have Ben yesterday, but obviously trying to limit those. The, the Villalobos one, like I said, it happened quick, too. Didn't want to bring Ferrer into that dirty, so I didn't want to rush him. Can't rush a TJ guy coming back. Um, but you couldn't predetermine a guy going out there 73 pitches and then things escalating really quickly, even though um, I, I should be on it a little bit more. But like I said, we used Ross on the Louvier day, so he's been down, so we're a little tapped right now, but we're, we're feeling good about it. Yeah, and, you know, that's a lot to do with 13 games in a row. And now we're on, what, game eight of that or game nine of that because we got four more nine, to go yep. here. So uh, just how have you thought the team's handled this kind of stretch here? Obviously, I'm sure guys are tired. It's been tough on the pen. You know, 13 in a row, not a lot of rest days. Yesterday kind of, uh, you know, gives you at least a chance to get some rest and sleep, get off your feet later in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, just how have you felt that the team's handled it, uh, this 13-game streak? Um, the team handled it well. Uh, obviously, you know, you you got to pull your weight. Um, that comes down to starting pitching. I mean, you got you got to be able to pull your weight. That way, the bullpen is not trying to carry that load. Uh, we've done a good job of that on the starting side. We haven't had anybody get knocked out too early, um, and, and kind of pull pull what they needed to pull. I thought Louvier was the only one, but he was on limited bullets. Like I said, um, could have went out for a fifth, but it wasn't. Wouldn't, there was no point to it. Yeah. As far as the position player side, I've tried to give, like you can see, I've, it's not the lineup's changing on purpose. It's I'm trying to give guys a little bit of a blow. Zay's had a couple of days, especially after he's caught or getting ready to catch. Um, Rustic had DH. He had a, he had an off day there at Schaumburg. Um, D Fuentes hated the DH spot the other day. So did Hank. <laughs> Just trying to get these guys off their legs a little bit. They want to play. They're hungry. But it's one of those things like you feel good that you go out there and it's like it's like Hank. Hank got beat up the other day catching finishing out that game chamber and he's been grinding he's a guy that does not want to line up now i think coming those balls that he hit yesterday um if you were fresh what if he was fresh what if you had a day off yeah. right there you know what i mean he's tagging the balls like like he's doing he's not going to want out but the guys are a little bit more tired especially after bus trips here bus trips there bus trip back early game there um they're a little bit more tired than they actually think they are um, and I think you can kind of see that in a little bit of the play. But I think the guys are handling it really well. Like I said, trying to give everybody a little bit of blow, a little bit of a day off, and just uh, expecting those starting pitchers to go deep. That way the bullpen uh, can pitch the way they need to pitch to be successful. Well, when that off day does come on Monday, I'm sure everyone's going to have a sigh of relief uh, before you go and start a nine-game road trip, yeah. uh, which will be interesting. That nine-game road trip, three at Washington, three at New York, three at New Jersey. Uh, you do have an off day on those, which, <laughs> which is always good. So a yeah. uh, you know, long road trip coming up, but we still got four more here at home. Schaumburg hoping uh, for the finale today. Just a quick question here. Do you consider this a four-game series or the, the three-game series? I know me and Tim have spoke about it's a four-game series. No. Nick, Nick's thinking it's a three-game series. It's so a th it's a three. We finished the, the three games, Tim, at y'all's place for the first time. You guys took that sweep. Just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we swept us twice. No, we're starting over. It's a three-game series. I, I, I hate three-game series in general because I, I like to split on the road. You yeah. need to be able to, the ability to be able to split on the road, win at home. Um, three-game series, yeah, you, better, you better win that first one, baby. Um, but now it's a rubber match today in, that, in this series. Well, you guys can feel like you split on the road if you want. Um, but, no, man, it's a three-game series. We're winning that today. <laughs> I hope so as well. That 
that first pitch coming up here on Thirsty Thursday, 6.44 p.m., Flow Baseball and Meredex. Make sure to catch that. Uh, we got action all weekend here at Thomas More Stadium, so come on down. Firework Friday. Tomorrow we got Margaritaville on Saturday. We're wearing some uh, – Cut off gun show jerseys. Baby. Yeah, we got the gun show going. I'm gonna try and get one. So when we do that stand up out there, we can we can rock and roll. But uh, I'm excited for it. Come on down, Thomas More Stadium. We'll catch it on Flow Baseball Meredith. 6:44 start tonight. We'll see y'all next time. R&R Talk. Later.